happy Sunday, everyone. I am so excited that you decided to join us at Gateway Kids this morning. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent means coming. And in this season, we are anticipating and getting prepared for the birth of the Savior of the world, Jesus. And in the same way in our lives, we are preparing and getting ready for the Lord to return again and to come and make all things new. So this Sunday, we light the first candle of Advent, which represents hope. We put our faith and hope in Christ, knowing that he will come and make all things new in the world that is broken and hurting. So before we get started, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that we can put our hope and trust in you, knowing that you are our maker and you will come again, coming to make all things new, Lord. Be with our time together as we worship and praise you. In your name I pray, amen. Let's worship. is on my side you're always there when life's not fair kept me from trying to run and hide so i thought so i thought that i should let you know
habits. I don't mean habits like picking your nose or <laughs> biting your fingernails. Oh, sorry, I know, I know it's bad. <sighs> I'm talking about habits that are good for you, like um, eating your vegetables or brushing your teeth before bedtime. These are good habits. And today, we're talking about getting in a good habit of gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. It shouldn't be hard to get into a habit of gratitude. After all, saying thank you is really easy, especially if you're sending a text. See? Thank you. Or, thanks. Anyway, the thanking part is the easy part of the habit. The part that isn't so easy is the remembering part. Usually, when we don't say thank you, it's because we forget. That's true when thanking other people, and it can be true when thanking God, too. In today's story, we're going to learn how we can make a habit of remembering what God has done for us. It sounds like a good habit to me. <laughs> I've got to stop doing that. Oh, fantastic. That was Johnny Boy and the Beef Jerky Boys running away from a fight. Up next, we got more hits for you. But first, let's take some calls. Hello, you are on WSO So with John. Hey, John. This is Steve at WJED in Skokie. Just wanted to give a shout out and say thank you for bringing so much joy to the people. Thanks, Steve. Right back at you. Hey, you're on the air with John. John, this is Barb and Vidalia at W-O-N Yun. Just wanted to say thank you. You're sweeter than honeycomb dipped in molasses. Keep up the good work, sugar. Thanks, Barb. Hello, talk to me. Hi, this is Brandon, your co-host on the So-and-So Show. I wanted to give you a shout out and say, you're the best host ever. But seriously, Brandon, if anyone is the best host ever, it's you, buddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, how about some music from Planet John's guitar hit, Chain Reaction of Love? You're not the only one who's good at impersonations. Oh, whoa. everyone, I'm Brandon. I'm John. And um, welcome to the So-and-So Show. <laughs> so John. Hey, Jabberwocky uh, is a nonsense poem written by Lewis Carroll, included in his novel Through the Looking Glass. Yeah. yeah. Okay, John. Yeah. I mean, are you gonna do the show with me today? Oh yeah. I just have to get my daily reading in. Okay, right now? Yeah. I mean, it's important to make a habit of reading a little bit every day, kids. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Today I'm reading this classic, The J in Kekalapadaya. Mm -hmm. Do you have to read it in the middle of the show? I've missed a few days and I'm trying to catch up. Yeah, how, how, how many days? What day is it? Uh, one, two, three years. <sighs> huh, did you know? Did you know that Jacksonville, Florida is the largest city by land area in the continental United States? I did not know that. <laughs> this book is incredible. You can learn almost anything you want. As long as it starts with a J and existed before 1967. Yeah, I don't know why more people haven't read it. Yeah, me neither. By the way, <clears throat> if you don't know what an encyclopedia is, you can look it up on the internet, along with literally anything else you want to learn about. What? Not all jaguars have spots. That's crazy. John, please read that some other time. We're in the middle of something here. No, but I found that I have a better chance of keeping a good habit when I have it stack. When you what now? When I have it stack. Yeah, I heard the word. It's when you take one habit and you stack it onto another. Like, I'm in the habit of doing the show and so show with you every week. If I stack my reading habit on top of that, then I won't forget to read. Okay, can't you stack it onto another habit? I mean, what's another habit you have? Well, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I have a habit of screaming before I do anything else. Hey! 
Why in the world? It clears the lungs. Oh, fine. Okay. Why don't you habit stack reading after your morning scream? Oh, because after my morning scream, I drink my morning coffee. Okay, then habit stack reading after your coffee. Oh, but that would get in the way of my morning cry. Is the paddle ball part of it? Habit stacking. Okay. So you've got a full morning. Uh -huh. All right. But we've got to figure out some place to stack your reading habit. Okay, we can make a game of it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah! Habit stacking heroes. The game is easy. Instead of doing habits one after another, we're going to do them all at once. Whoever can do the most good habits at the same time wins. Make sense? Not at all. Let's play. Ready, set, go! Brush your teeth. Okay. Easy. Uh-huh. Look at that. Sit-ups. Zero. Okay. All right. Practice math. What? Okay. Practice this is easy. Vocal warm ups. Oh. Cats can't kick cups. Cats can't kick cups. Do the bicycle. Oh. Cats can't kick cups. You're both winners. Oh. Really? Hey. I've never felt more productive. It's Bible story time with Cameron. <laughs> hey, good people. Hey, Cameron. Thanks again for uh, taking our friend Kellen's place this month. Anytime. What's going on with you guys today? Uh, habit stacking. You want to try? Um... Trust me, Cameron. It's a hard no. Okay, but habits can be good sometimes. In fact, today we're talking about a habit that began thousands of years ago that's still happening today. Awesome. Take it away, Cameron. You've probably heard of the Lord's Supper, or maybe you've heard it called communion, or even a really fancy word like Eucharist. Different people observe the Lord's Supper in different ways, sometimes every week or every month, or maybe a few times a year. Sometimes people use bread and wine, sometimes they use juice and crackers. But even though everyone does it a little bit differently, the reason they do it is the same. They do it to remember. When Jesus and his disciples were having their last supper together, they themselves were remembering something called the Passover. Hundreds of years before Jesus, God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt. And God chose a man named Moses to rescue his people from the Egyptian Pharaoh. Moses said, Let my people go. But the Pharaoh refused. So God sent 10 plagues. Frogs, sick animals, flies. But the 10th plague was by far the worst. Moses warned Pharaoh that if he didn't let God's people go, every firstborn son in Egypt would die, including Pharaoh's own son. But Pharaoh refused. God gave the Israelites a way to protect themselves from what was coming. They were to sacrifice a lamb, then spread some of its blood on the doorframe of their houses. This would be a sign for God to pass over that home and not harm anyone inside. That night, those with the blood of the lamb on their door frames were spared. But Pharaoh's firstborn son died, along with every other firstborn son in Egypt. So Pharaoh sent the Israelites away. After hundreds of years in slavery, they were finally free. That 
that's what Jesus and his disciples were remembering during their last meal together. They were remembering the day when God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. But Jesus was about to give the celebration a whole new meaning for you and me. When Jesus had given thanks, he broke the bread and he said, This is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. Jesus knew that God had a plan for another incredible rescue. This time, he would rescue the whole world. And this time, Jesus himself would be the sacrifice. That's why we celebrate the Lord's Supper today. So we can show God how grateful we are to him for sending his son. And so that we can get in the habit of remembering how Jesus gave his life to save you and me. The end. Wow. Right? Yeah, it's so cool to think that when we take communion or the Lord's Supper, we're literally doing something that Christians have been doing since the beginning of the church. And that's over a hundred years. Try 2,000 years. I say again, wow. Yeah. It's important for us to have things we do regularly that can remind us to be grateful to God. Mm. Hey, you ought to have it stacked that, John. Yeah, I'll put that right after my morning cry. You see, Cameron. You don't have to explain. Okay. Thanks for the story, Cameron. You bet, guys. See you next time. <sighs> Looks like we've got some remembering to do, John. I I'm ready to try, but it's just hard for me. I, I can't even remember to send my Aunt Maisie a thank you card for my graduation present. Your graduation? Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to do it for 25 years. Reveal the question! <laughs> what helps you remember to be grateful? Well, doing the Lord's Supper helps me remember to be grateful for what Jesus did for us. Yeah, and being outside can help me remember to be thankful for all the beautiful things God made. Yeah, what about you? What helps you remember to be grateful? Not just to God, but to people, too. Yeah, talk about it together. And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. And I'll be moving on to the K in the Incacalapaidia. Can't wait to tell you the major export of Kirkarikachistain. Kirkarikachistain. I can't wait either. Bye. Bye. people have been finding different ways, different habits, or traditions to help them remember what God has done. We remember that God sent Jesus to Earth by celebrating Christmas. We remember the time Jesus came back from the dead every Easter. And another thing people do to remember Jesus died on a cross for our sins is celebrate something called the Lord's Supper or communion. Some people remember the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples by eating bread or wine. Some people eat crackers and juice. But however you celebrate, it's important to remember Jesus died for you because he loves you and he made a way for you to have a relationship with God. Here's the one thing to remember today. Get in the habit of being grateful. Find a way every day to thank God for what he's done. And be specific. Thank him for the smell of the rain or the sweetness of the ice cream you're eating or for the music that makes you want to dance. And if you have a moment to really remember what he's done for you through the Lord's Supper or communion or during a special holiday, don't let that moment pass you by. Really think about God and how much he loves you. I think that will be a good habit for all of us. And it won't cause pain in your cuticles. I'll see you later. Thank you. Hello friends, hope you enjoyed our story for today as we learned about the Passover and how we participate in the body of Christ through 
participating in the act of communion that represents God's body and God's blood that was shed for us. In the same way in this Advent season, because of Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross, we have this hope that Jesus will come again, come to make all things new and fulfill the promise that he has given to us in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And it is by this hope that we continue to participate in the body of Christ and live into the mission that Christ has called us to. So for our question of the day, today we ask the question, what makes you remember to be grateful? I don't know about you, but I am reminded of God's goodness and what he has given to me. And that makes me feel grateful for what I have. Every time I'm feeling down, you pick me up. Sing, oh.